friend, today is one of my favorite days I've been waiting for all year. We are gonna go harvest the winter squash, AKA all the pumpkins, well not all the pumpkins, but most of the pumpkins. And I've got my wheelbarrow because we are gonna be harvesting some big pumpkins. We've got our Atlantic giant pumpkins along with some other good pumpkins. And I've got some snippers because we are gonna be harvesting the corn today as well. And I've got a basket with some gloves and scissors because I'm sure there's gonna be some other goodies that we're gonna be able to harvest while we're out there. So let's head out into the garden and get this year's pumpkins. Cheers. I also grabbed a carbonated water. These two pumpkins along with these two pumpkins here are my Atlantic giant pumpkin. This variety of pumpkin is the pumpkin that holds the record for the world's largest pumpkin. Clearly I did not grow the world's largest pumpkin here, but I am incredibly proud of this pumpkin. You know a pumpkin is ready to harvest when the outside is hard and when you take your fingernail and you push onto it, you're not indenting the pumpkin. Another way you can tell if a pumpkin is ready to harvest is if the curl right there, the one that's closest to the stem is dried up and shriveled up and you can see that mine is. So this pumpkin and this pumpkin are ready to harvest. These two pumpkins are over here are not ready to harvest. They came on about a month after my first two pumpkins. And you can see when I push on the pumpkin, it kind of leaves an indent. So we're gonna leave those two to continue to ripen. Some of this plant looks really healthy still. Some look super diseased. So the diseased stuff, I don't want composting on my gravel. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up and just stick it on the landscape fabric. And then come when I harvest the rest of these pumpkins, I'll grab all of it. I quickly realized that there's way too much mass here that I can't put all these vines in my raised bed. So what I end up doing is I end up grabbing the majority of these vines and I end up bringing them to my chickens and I let them break down in my chicken run. Now chickens won't eat the vines of winter squash or summer squash or pumpkin plants, but they'll have fun digging around in it and as the they break down and bugs start to eat it and things like that, they'll have fun playing around in it. And there are some on the vines, there's some pumpkins or winter squash that have started to develop and the chickens will have fun eating those. So I end up trying to put these vines in my raised bed and then I realize this is not going to work. There's way too much mass here. I need to bring these to the chicken run. Now, one reason I don't want these really breaking down in my walkways or on my gravel is they will break down compost and start to put organic matter on my gravel. Weeds are brilliant. They can thrive in very harsh environments. And if I start to let organic matter and compost breaking down in my walkways, I'm going to have a harder time controlling the weeds in my future gardening adventures. So that's one reason why I am trying to keep around my raised beds nice and tidy and not let as much compost compost in those areas. What I realized is there were two separate plants here. One of them is the one that I just removed and it produced these two pumpkins and they started growing out about a month before this plant started producing these two pumpkins. So I find that very interesting. 
one of the reasons why these pumpkins probably didn't get so big is because they were competing for nutrients and for space. So I'm definitely gonna try to grow these pumpkins again. We'll go inside and weigh them and we'll see how much they weigh today. And then we'll see if next year we can beat the weight. Clearly, <laughs> these are not gonna be contenders, but I'm excited still to decorate with those. I'm trying to think if I should just clean up the rest of these. The rest of these plants are pretty diseased. I've got this plant here that's growing these banana squash, I think is what they're called. I have to go inside and look at the seed packet to know exactly what they're called. I think these two are done. I thought they were supposed to get a lot bigger than this. I've got two of them. There's one there. And then there's one down here where it never got pollinated. So it's rotting. I think I'm going to pull this one up too. And I've got some butternut squash that are not quite ready. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just clean the rest of this area up. So let's go ahead and harvest and clean. I did look up those pumpkins or winter squash. I should let you know, I tend to use the term winter squash and pumpkin interchangeably. Those are banana winter squash and those should ideally grow between two and three feet and mine are probably about a foot long. They're supposed to have the flavor of a butternut squash. I've never grown them before. I've always wanted to have them in my garden. I saw a YouTube video probably five or six years ago about them. Someone was cooking with them and I thought, man, I want to try those. And so this was the first year I'm excited I was able to grow them, but maybe next year we'll be able to get them a little bit bigger. I will cook with them and we'll see if we like them. I guess if I don't really like them, then maybe I won't grow them again. But it's just so funny because I've been really wanting to grow those for a long time. And so that's super exciting that we were able to harvest them. Now, as I'm in here, my original plan on this day was to allow the non-ripe winter squash and pumpkins to finish ripening on the vine. But I'm just noticing that these plants are looking awful. Half of them are half dead and you can finish ripening winter squash and pumpkins indoors. Even if the pumpkin is green, you can ripen it inside. And this is a green pumpkin that wasn't fully pollinated and is rotting. So I end up tossing that in this pile. We end up giving this whole pile to the chickens and the chickens play with this. But you can, if a pumpkin is supposed to be orange and you harvest it green, you can ripen them inside. And so that's what I end up doing on this day. I originally think I wanted to leave a bunch out but I didn't want a bunch of the plants to continue to compost in the walkways. And I kind of wanted to just start cleaning up these areas. I don't want my garden at the end of the year to be one massive mess. And so I just think, I think I can start taking chunks and you know harvesting what I can and then cleaning up as I go. And so that's what I decide to do. So I end up harvesting these two Atlantic pumpkins and then I end up getting these vines in this raised bed. I end up taking these vines and putting them in the chicken run, but for now I'm just going to set them there so we can go and harvest some other things. Now a reason why I think some of my winter squash in this bed in particular didn't end up getting very large is I did not amend this bed and so next year when I grow winter squash I will fertilize them. I changed my mind. I decided to go ahead and grab all of these. I think they're done growing and I think they're actually ripe. This one I don't think is, but when I go to cook them, I'll cut into all of them. I believe these are sweet meat and I'll let these finish ripening inside. I can do that. I wasn't, I was kind of going back and forth and I decided to go ahead and grab it all. I need my wheelbarrow to collect this, to go dump this. And we're going to leave this one squash plant. This is my butternut squash. I've got three of them on here and we're going to let these continue to ripen because these plants are diseased a little bit, but not as much as some of the other ones. I cut the roots. I cut the plant at the root and I'm going to let this continue to just the roots compost in place. And then once I bring those pumpkins upstairs, I'll come back and I'll compost this when I've got my wheelbarrow. But I think this is going to look a lot better once we get this all cleaned up. Now we're going to turn our attention to the corn and I'm going to start harvesting the corn. In this bed we've got corn, 
This is the best corn I've ever grown. And there is definitely corn in there that's sweet. So I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna grab all the corn cobs first. Obviously some of it didn't get pollinated, but there's some good corn in there that we'll be able to have for dinner. There's probably only enough corn in this whole bed for maybe one or two dinners, but we will enjoy it. So let me go ahead and I'm just gonna start harvesting. Now some of them look pretty good, just like that one I grabbed. Oh yeah, that one is beautiful too. Let's see what else we got. But some of them, like this one, that didn't get pollinated at all. So the chickens are gonna enjoy that one. So let me go through and harvest. Wow. This one is beautiful and this one didn't get pollinated. So I'm gonna go through and open each one and make separate piles for ones that got pollinated and ones that didn't. That one's beautiful. At the base of the corn, I also have pinto beans. So I think what I'm gonna do is harvest all the corn off the stalks, check to see if they were pollinated and then we'll cut the corn and then we'll deal with the pinto beans. This is my fourth year growing corn and this is by far the best corn harvest I have ever grown. The first three years I tried to grow corn, I grew it in an in-ground garden that was not irrigated. And if you live where we live in the Pacific Northwest, we get extremely little rain during the growing season. And so if I'm not hand watering, they weren't getting watered. And I think that plus the fact that they were in an in-ground bed with very little nutrients, they never produce. The first year I got maybe five years of corn. We enjoyed one corn salsa and the following two years we got none and I have probably planted a thousand corn seeds. So I'm very, 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 very happy with the years, this year's corn harvest. The fact that I'm able to harvest anything at all and I didn't even think we were going to get this. So I'm pretty excited about it. Here is 2023's corn harvest. It's humble but better than nothing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take care of all these corn stalks. So here's the before. I was not sure if I was gonna cut these down. I really, really enjoyed watching the corn grow out my window in my living room and being able to see them stand super tall and proud throughout this growing season. But I thought, you know what, if I wait and do all the cleanup projects at the end of the season, then it's gonna be, it's gonna feel overwhelming. So I did decide to go ahead and tackle cutting the corn. And I was thinking that if I cut these corn stalks down, it would be easier to collect the pinto beans that are growing underneath these corn stalks. So I planted the corn, I let the corn get about four or five inches tall. And then I went back and I planted pinto bean seeds or beans that I had purchased at Walmart for eating probably two or three years ago. I found them in my pantry and I thought I'm going to go ahead and just throw those in the ground and see if we can grow pinto beans with the corn. That's a very traditional way of growing beans and corn and winter squash together. It's called Three Sisters Gardening and I had never tried it and I thought I would give it a try this year. Here's what it looks like after I cut all the stalks down. A little bit sad to see it go, but that is part of gardening, is things come and go. And so I thought that if I kind of removed some of the bulk of the corn stalks, I'd be able to get to my beans a little bit better. Now this was a complete experiment. I had never done this before, and you will see whether it was a success or not. But before we can get to those pinto beans, I need to remove these corn stalks. I do end up giving these to the chickens as well. I throw these in the chicken run and they have a ton of fun scratching through all of the corn. Like I, I do end up leaving some of the corn behind and they end up fighting, finding them and fighting for them and just having a good time. I try to give my chickens as much fun garden things to play with as possible because they aren't free range anymore and so they just something like this is great enrichment for them. 
my hope was by cutting all of the stalks close to the ground, I would be able to access the black beans. I've got a couple black beans in here, but it's still really hard to see them. So in just a second, we're gonna see how many black beans we can harvest. Not black beans, pinto beans. I'm actually gonna stick these in my pocket. I do have a squash plant on the corner of each of the, right here and here. And so I wanna be careful I don't hurt that. I probably should have put these corn on the cobs directly into my harvest basket, but I didn't really think about that. So that's what we're doing now. I'm gonna get the corn in the harvest basket and I do end up putting the corn in the shade so it doesn't end up baking while we harvest other things. Okay, so here's 2023's corn harvest, one basket full, more corn than I've ever grown. Around each corn, I planted two or three pinto bean seeds, and I've got a couple plants that produce seed, not very many. So I'm gonna try to harvest as many as I can find. It is hard to see them. I'm not really <laughs> harvesting very many. I probably planted more seeds than I'm harvesting, but hey, it was a fun experiment. Wanted to see if it would work. They were seeds I had had in my pantry for probably a year and a half, or beans, beans I'd had in my pantry for probably a year and a half. There's a few weeds in here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those too. I think I got all of them. I probably missed a ton actually, because they blend in so well. Oh yeah, here's about four right here that I missed. Two more right here. I'm gonna throw these weeds over the fence. Oh yeah, there's a ton I missed. Another weed, pull that. I'm gonna have to come back and clean this up a little bit, cut closer to the ground. I'm gonna pull the landscape fabric, amend the soil. Not today, because I know that there's a lot more pumpkins to harvest. So let's keep harvesting and focus. And then that's my pile right there. It's getting bigger and bigger. I went ahead and put all the corn stalks there. And once I've emptied my wheelbarrow, we will dump all of that in the compost. But I can see over here, these winter squash, they're done. I've got one squash out of all those that are kind of hanging down. They're starting to decompose. They've got disease. So let's harvest the squash and clean up those plants. I've got one squash right here. I think this is sweet meat. I'm not exactly sure. This was a bed that I had a bunch of volunteers come up in some of my flower beds on my porch and I didn't want them to not do anything with the flower bed so I transplanted them over here. So I don't really know what they are. I got one. I've got a couple more I can see that need to be harvested. I'm having a dinner party next week and I wanted to be able to decorate the table scape with some of my mini pumpkins. And I am going to be able to do that because we're gonna harvest all of my itty bitty mini pumpkins right now. So this plant had two on here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off of the ground. I'm gonna compost this along with the plant that had this on it. Get that there, put that there. Look how cute these little things are, so cute. I've got a bunch more where that came from too. But first I wanna clean up this, this mess. It probably would make the most sense. I don't think any of these plants are gonna produce anything. So we're just gonna clean this up. This plant here is a butternut squash. I'm gonna leave this plant because it doesn't look as diseased and that's got some ripening to do. It's still a little green but these ones are perfect. And I just found a bunch of gloves in here, of course. I'm 
gonna get these pumpkins with the rest. One thing I wanna do more of next year is try to grow more pumpkins out, like growing out of beds. This is my carrot onion bed and I've got pumpkins here and I've got pumpkins growing out of my other carrot onion bed and it seems to work pretty well. Now these are little pumpkins. Again, we've got little littles here. I think this one still needs to ripen a little bit, so we'll let this one stay. Oh no! That's why I wanted to use the scissors and not break it off, because I broke the stem, so this pumpkin isn't going to have very long shelf life, which is kind of a bummer, because that's supposed to be just for decoration. It's okay. Corn, pinto beans, and pumpkins. I don't know what gets more fall than that right there. I'm gonna stick this in the shade while we go harvest some more pumpkins. Okay, right here, here's another example. This is a carrot onion bed, and I've got a white pumpkin growing here. I don't know what kind of pumpkin this is, and I don't know if it's an eating pumpkin or not, but I'm first gonna decorate with it before I do anything else with it. And then it looks like I've got some butternut squash growing here as well that we'll leave alone. So that seems to be kind of the trend. broke the stem off that one. That's okay. I didn't mean to do that. I just noticed something interesting. We just harvested the white pumpkin on the other side of this raised bed where there was one butternut squash. Well, I come over here to look at the butternut squash plant and I notice that there's one, two, three, four butternut squash over here and two of them are ready to be harvested. Two of them aren't. This one right here is still a little on the green side. You can see that green stripe. But this one and this one look ready to me. Let's do the fingernail test. Oh yeah, those are totally, totally ready. Okay, let's get these two harvested. We were just out here yesterday harvesting zucchini off this plant and it did not look that bad yesterday. I mean, it was diseased, but it didn't look like this. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this plant now because right now it looks awful and I don't think it's gonna produce anymore. Oh, we got an onion with it. Okay, I'm gonna go toss this one. You know those blue pumpkins I've been harvesting? I don't know if they're sweet meat because this pumpkin is sweet meat, I know for sure. Those might be a Hubbard style pumpkin. I've got two pumpkins here. This one is not ready. It came on about a month after. You can see my fingernail indent staying behind. This one came on a long time ago, way before this one, and it's ready. It's beautiful. This is beautiful. This is my favorite eating pumpkin. So I'm thinking now, because I know this is sweet meat, I think this is a Blue Hubbard style pumpkin. I'm gonna have to look through my seeds again to see what I have. This is beautiful. One of my goals is to decorate my back porch with a fall theme and I needed to harvest my pumpkins in order to do that. I wanna put my green stalks away for the year, grab some mums at the nursery and decorate with these pumpkins. And so now that we've harvested them, we are on our way to do that. And I wanna be able to do that before my dinner party. And so that's really exciting. That is still the mess we need to clean up, but we got a lot more pumpkins to harvest where that came from. We got a whole bed of pumpkins. First, let's go get these little ones because I've been staring at them and I knew they needed to be harvested for a long time. And they are in the zucchini patch, which is kind of funny that 
these white pumpkins ended up in the zucchini patch. These zucchini plants need to come out. They've got quite a bit of disease, but we've got here, we've got a pumpkin plant that is so ready to be harvested. These, this plant is completely done, but we got quite a few pumpkins off this one plant. I wanna to try to keep the stem, because I think the stem is kind of the, the whimsical part. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now how cute is this one with this little curly cue left on it? So that's gonna go on the tablescape for the dinner party. This cilantro is still smelling so fresh and delicious, but we've got these cute little pumpkins We've now officially harvested all the mini pumpkins that I grew. I hope to grow way more of these next year. We have one more major pumpkin bed to harvest and I have the most pumpkins in this bed out of any of the other beds combined. This bed has produced like crazy. We have Cinderella pumpkins. We have fairy tale pumpkins. I'm gonna have to look at the tags. Inside these beds, I put a piece of parchment, not parchment, I put a, we're not in the kitchen, we're in the garden, a piece of duct tape, white duct tape with the names of the pumpkins. This is a fairy tale pumpkin, not that one, that's a, well, you know what? I need to follow the plant and figure out where. Okay, so no, this is not a fairy tale pumpkin, I didn't think it was. And I'm gonna harvest it, even though it's not done ripening, I'm gonna let it ripen up on the porch. I think it's beautiful. This is called a M-U-S-Q-U-E-E -E province pumpkin. And it should be orange, but it's still ripening, but the plant is completely dead. So I'm gonna let it ripen up on the porch. My goal for this bed was to plant pumpkins along both sides and let them grow and vine out and they did that perfectly. And then I planted zinnias along the middle and so that those would grow up out of the pumpkins and that has been beautiful the way that that's worked out. This is the color that pumpkin should be or will be when it finally ripens. This here is what the color of that pumpkin is supposed to look like. And I think it's one of the prettiest pumpkins I've ever grown. The orange color is so muted and absolutely beautiful. I think this is, well, just from the looks of it, it looks like a good eating pumpkin to me, but you can't judge a book by its cover, I guess. <laughs> but for some reason, this just seems like a dense, yummy looking pumpkin. So it's absolutely beautiful. So in time, this pumpkin should look like this pumpkin because those are the same types of pumpkins. It's a little hard for me to tell, but I think these two pumpkins are the same as the first two pumpkins that I just harvested. Let me look. Yes, they are. So these are all the same variety of pumpkin. Absolutely beautiful. This next variety of pumpkin is called a Long Island cheese, and I've never grown this variety either. So when we get inside, we'll be able to roast it and give it a taste test. I got one, two, and three of those, I believe. Those are beautiful too. I've got three more of these muscadi pumpkins. I think I'm gonna let these continue. Well, I don't know. Do I harvest them? Do I not? I think I'm gonna harvest them. Let's see, I'm gonna do the fingernail test. And they are good. pretty sure all these pumpkins are the same variety and these four just need to continue to ripen. I'm pretty sure. 
I could be wrong, my labeling skills when it comes to <laughs> varieties is not the best. It's actually been the best this year it's ever been in my entire gardening season. What's worked really well is the tape and I'm gonna be better next year. Every year I'm a little bit better, I'm a little bit better. And I do know what variety these next ones are. These next ones are Cinderella pumpkins. I've always had such good luck growing this variety. They've always been really prolific for me and easy to grow. So I am gonna get these harvested. I grow this variety of pumpkin because they've always, like I said, been so prolific and easy to grow. So it's kind of like a confidence boost variety for me. They are a little bit on the waterier side. So when you cook them, you need to drain the liquid out before you use them in things like pumpkin pie and pumpkin bread. They taste delicious. They just, you have to know that they're a little bit waterier. And so I'm always on the hunt for the perfect variety of pumpkin. Sweet meat is my favorite for eating, but I've never had the best luck with it being super prolific. So I will probably always have a Cinderella pumpkin in my garden for the confidence and the, the fact that I know that it tends to do pretty well and grow quite a bit. So I know I'll probably get a harvest. I don't want to say for sure because you never know <laughs> in gardening, but it's always done really well for me. I've got these two plant, these two here. So I've got four total. I was just stung by a wasp. I don't know if it attacked me or if I got in its way. I'm thinking I got in its way. Second time this year, not allergic, thankfully. We're just gonna keep on going. I'm gonna be okay. So we've got, well, we gotta get these pumpkins harvested. <laughs> Let's get them harvested. And then I wanna clean up this situation. What I was telling you before I was so rudely stung by a wasp about the Cinderella pumpkins is that I will just have them in my garden probably every year as just a way to try to guarantee myself a pumpkin harvest. I love growing pumpkins. I find so much joy in putting a small seed in the ground and being able to watch it grow into a relatively large piece of fruit. I mean, we're talking 30, 40 pounds and it comes from a simple seed. It's just mind blowing to me every year. And so I'll always have Cinderella pumpkins. And then of course, always experimenting with new varieties. I just find so much joy in growing pumpkins. So here you can clearly see that I am removing all the pumpkin vines. I, this whole day I was going back and forth what I was gonna do. Am I gonna keep the fruit on the vine to ripen? Even though the vines are basically dying, am I gonna harvest? And I chose to go ahead and harvest the majority of the pumpkins and the vines. The plants that weren't super diseased, I left those behind, but in this bed, I cleared out all the vines and I'm gonna clean up this bed and the areas around this bed. And we are going to ripen the unripe fruit indoors. Now, I did go ahead and just Google, I've had good luck doing this before where I just harvest the pumpkins that are green and set them on my counter and let them ripen indoors and I've had no problems with it, but I did just Google the proper ripening technique for ripening semi-ripe fruit indoors. They need to already started to ripen. I think, I don't think you could harvest a completely unripe fruit and have it ripen, but what Google says is take the semi-ripe fruit, they should be cut off the vine and set to cure in a well-ventilated space with temperatures between 80 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit in relative humidity between 80 and 85% humidity, and that should ripen your squash just fine. Now, I am not gonna heat my house to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, and we have a cold snap coming in, and so outside, it's about 65 to 67 degrees outside, and so I don't have those ideal temperatures, 
So I am just going to have my unripe pumpkins indoors and let them ripen inside. And we're just going to go with that <laughs> and see what happens. See if I can get them to ripen. And here is the majority of the harvest. Now there are some pumpkins still left in the garden. Mostly butternut squash is left in the garden to continue to ripen. But this is the majority of 2023's pumpkin harvest. I'm going to bring this up to the deck and we are going to weigh these pumpkins or at least the very, very, very large pumpkins. So I can let you know and we can have a record of the largest pumpkin I have ever grown. And then maybe next year we will attempt to see if we can break that record. We got some beautiful, beautiful pumpkins this year. I think the last time I grew pumpkins, my total pumpkin harvest was one wheelbarrow full. And on this occasion, we had four wheelbarrow fulls of pumpkins. So that is a huge win. Here is 2023's pumpkin harvest. And I just weighed a bunch of pumpkins. This first Atlantic giant pumpkin was 46.6 pounds. This was our heaviest pumpkin at 53.8 pounds. So no 2000 pound pumpkin, but I am happy with a 50 pound pumpkin. That's definitely the biggest pumpkin I've ever grown. Now something super interesting about these two pumpkins weight comparison. This here is my fancy French pumpkin that should be this color, but it's still ripening. This pumpkin is so heavy. It's 32.8 pounds. This pumpkin is kind of the same size. I mean, it is a little bit smaller, but it is only 21.4 pounds, and that's the Cinderella pumpkin. When you look at the size difference between the two, they don't look like they would have that big of a discrepancy between the two, but these pumpkins are so much denser that I think they're gonna have more meat to them than water. My Cinderella pumpkins are, like I was mentioning earlier, they're a little bit on the waterier side. Let me show you the ones that I have inside too. We have our Baby Boo pumpkins and our Jack B. Little pumpkins. I'm not sure which ones are which, uh, I just know that they are those ones. These are going to come center stage for the party that I'm going to have. They're going to become table decor. And then we've got a couple butternut squash, pinto beans, and 2023's corn harvest. Now I'm considering the pumpkin harvest a massive win. By far the biggest pumpkin harvest I have ever grown. And I am thrilled with the results. Pinto bean harvest, on the other hand, this is a little bit of a fail. It is the first time I'm growing pinto beans, so that's a win that I got them to grow at all but it was a total experiment. I probably planted two or three times the amount of beans I'm gonna be able to harvest out of those pods, but they were beans that I bought at Walmart probably two years ago sitting in my pantry and I thought I would throw them in the ground and see what happens. So a mix of success slash failure. It didn't take up any extra space in the garden. It was a fun experiment, so that's what that is. Corn harvest, by far the absolute best corn I have ever grown. Now, look at that. How beautiful is that? This is probably the largest corn cob I have in here. Some of them are a fraction of the size. This one's even beautiful too. Some of them are only this big, but that is by far the most corn I have ever grown that is edible. So that's probably gonna be two, three meals worth of corn maybe. And so I'm really glad that I did go and buy 150 ears of corn for my local farmer. Josh and I have been really enjoying that. We've already been eating it and it's been so good. I'm excited to add this to our collection. So friend, if you are new around here, please consider subscribing because we are gonna turn a bunch of this yummy produce into yummy things to eat throughout this fall and winter. And if you wanna see the pumpkin theme dinner party menu made tablescape, all that stuff, we will be sharing that with you very, very soon. If you wanna see me process 150 ears of corn, I can put that here. I can also put another one of my videos down here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Oh, I do need to take care of all the corn that I piled up on that one bed and I need to take care of all those squash plants that I put on that one bed, but I will get to that later. I think tonight I'm gonna to put the corn in the fridge. I'm gonna shuck that and then we're calling it for the night. So friend, thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time.